thought today I'd talk a little bit about jungle aquariums. This is sort of what I'm known for alongside with biotope displays. And I really love a good jungle tank. I've got this video, it's an old video now, of an old tank. When I was living in Brazil, I had this really long, shallow aquarium, 180 centimeters by 60 centimeters by 30 centimeters. So it was only 30 centimeters deep. And it started out as a river display. I wanted a broad, shallow tank, but it ended up just being filled with plants uh, over around a year and different fishes, some of them sort of rescues, some of them that came from friends who were shutting down tanks while I was there. And the lighting was pretty DIY. The filtration was very DIY. The CO2 was just about legitimate. But I wanted to talk a bit about why set up a jungle tank, what the features of a jungle tank are, and why they're just so good for the fish, if you choose the fish correctly. So for me, the main elements of a jungle tank are a combination of textures, different plant sizes, and just a really lush display. Textures normally are thought to to be generally large broadleaf plants like Echinodorus and Anubias, but it doesn't have to be the case, as you can see here. I've used Eleocaris, giant hair grass, and some other species which are quite fine leaved, which contrast really nicely with the, uh, the broad leaves of the Echinodorus. I'm sorry if you can hear building work. They're building a new estate at the end of my road. So you may hear some banging and knocking and drilling. fish in here are quite happy and that was due to just the density of planting there's lots and lots of cover and the kinds of fishes that I use are sort of small species for the most part that live in tangles of plants and amongst root networks there was one as you may have seen small discus in here which I rescued from a slightly grim pet store and uh, he eventually went to live with a friend but I was holding him for a while we can see some hemiotis in there, rosy tetras, cardinals, green neons. It was a real mishmash. And yet it didn't look like a pick and mix. You know, sometimes you'll go and look at a tank or you'll look at a tank and you'll see a real array of fishes and colors. And it's overwhelming. There's, there's too much going on. There's, you know, three of this, 10 of this. I didn't quite do it that way. Um, I had a few more because it was a fairly sizable display, actually. But the density of the planting means that they're not all visible at the same time. You don't get that sense of being overwhelmed by the different kinds of fish. You are surprised instead because suddenly something appears that maybe you had forgotten was even in the tank. And I had some interesting ottos and some little catfish which would pop up from time to time. And it's easy to, uh, to forget that they were even in there. <laughs> Do apologize for the drilling in the background they are building this housing estate and i seem to have had the luck that every time i sit down to record something the builders bring out their massive hammer drills and beeping trucks and uh, yeah they're not making it easy for me so please forgive the background noise <laughs> in essence, is a mixture of textures, really densely planted, very lush. It doesn't have to be a pick and mix of fish. You can focus on one species, but there needs to be plenty of cover. As you can see, all of my fishes are colored out, they're out and about, they're pretty confident. Try to combine different height plants and different leaf shapes. Make sure there's something going on at the surface, in the mid-level, at lower levels. Don't worry too much about pruning or one plant blending into another or overtaking you can thin them out if one is perhaps overshadowing another species 
but just let things go as naturally as you dare, really, or as you like. It doesn't have to be an explosion of colour. Jungle plants tend to do quite, jungle displays, I'm sorry, tend to do quite well when they're focused mostly on a single colour. So I've really gone for green and I added a few Ludwigias for red highlights, which combined with the red noses of the Brummy noses and the red of the Cardinal Tetras. But essentially the display was mostly based around greens, fine textures, medium textures and large bold textures like the Echinodorus plants and some of the Nymphaea, the water lilies, which also provided dense cover for the fish. has a very basic formula in this sense. Lots and lots of plants, multitude of textures, plant density going on at all levels of the tank and ensuring you have lots of cover for your chosen fishes. If you stick to that, you're fine. dense displays require lots of fertilizers. I had very high lights on the tank. I made a sort of DIY lighting setup because I couldn't get very much equipment out there in Brazil. That meant I needed to put lots of fertilizers in and to prevent algae, I had quite a lot of CO2 going in there. You can do a sort of low tech, low maintenance jungle with simpler plants or root feeding plants, Echinodorus and uh, Valisneria, Aponogetans, for example, Nymphaeas. I had a number of stem plants in here. So I opted to use CO2 injection, and as you can see, the result was quite a lush display. So I thought I would just do this short video on the basics of creating a jungle tank and that you see an old tank that I had a number of years ago now back in Brazil. But I hope it was useful. And if anyone would like me to talk more about jungle displays, let me know. Always happy to get feedback in the comments and see if I can talk a bit about a jungle tank. Well, I'm going to shut up now and let you enjoy the last few seconds of this video in peace. Mm -hmm.